architects on the project, however, were inspired by Dubai's past. Once upon a time, Dubai's wealth came from the sea, where they harvested pearls. And this building's distinctive shape recalls that history. That curve is inspired by dhows, the traditional sailing boats that applied these waters since ancient times. Making an iconic building look like a ship was only part of the challenge. The architects wanted something more. They needed a statement. The solution? Well, put your building 300 metres out to sea on its own, tailor-made private island. Because it's not going to be cheap or easy. Engineers had to make an island big and solid enough to hold a quarter of a million ton tower. Most of all, they had to protect it from the sea and the power of the waves. Even this placid-looking gulf can have a dangerous temper which could easily wash away a man-made island. Back in the UK, I'm going to attempt to show how even a relatively small amount of water can do a surprising amount of damage. I'm going to create an artificial wave. The man in charge of sea defences at the Burj Al Arab was Mike McNichols. And these things can be pretty powerful. Yeah, you know, in the right circumstances, at the right speed, they can just act like a solid. Yeah. Smashing into whatever's there. This plate glass will test the destructive power of our wave. And don't think that this glass is a pushover. It's 10 mil thick. It's the safety stuff they use in tall buildings to stop people falling out. It's more than twice as thick as normal window glass. This is going to represent our wave. It's a ton of water. But it needs one more thing to be like a true wave. You need some, you know, a bit of speed to yeah. get this thing going, just like a wave pushing through the air. Our wave will be set in motion by gravity and explosives. Well, after you like this, it's very subtle. It's at, at the bottom of the bag, it's sort of a loop of, of deck cord, explosive, which will explode immediately. And at that point, there'll be no bottom on the bag, so all of this water, the whole lot will just fall out in one big solid lump and that's more like a wave. That's more like it Richard, yeah. Well to complete this demonstration of the power of a lump of water I've, I've got this. It's a sort of industrial dining table with the glass top to give it its full title. What will happen is we'll position the bag above there on the crane, fire the explosives, bang, no bottom in the bag, all of the water comes down in one go onto there and well we'll see what happens. Part of me thinks even in a solid lump the water will get here and then just sort of pour around the sides and the biggest problem we'll have is a puddle. You'll see, it's going to punch through that glass. All right, well, I'm going to make a suggestion. Whatever happens, let's watch it from over there. Now, I've always thought of water as kind of soft stuff which flows around things. Sure, in a high-pressure jet, it's good for cleaning the car, but a cubic metre of it falling onto thick plate glass? Ah, the box. <coughs> really can't hear a thing there. Nice loud count down. Sorry? And then nice loud count down and right. press the button. OK, right, I'm going to do this. This is it, for real, here we go. Here comes a wave. Stand by in five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> well... That was quite a big bang, thank you, for the big bang. <laughs> yeah, too much explosive. That's really... Well, you can see the thickness of the glass now. It's 10 mil thick. You could stand on that. Our tonne of water only fell a couple of metres, and it still had huge destructive power. Compared to the power of the waves in the Gulf, however, it is a drop in the ocean. 
the biggest waves that batter the artificial island can deliver hundreds of tons of force. Each wave can be the equivalent of 130 small cars crashing into it. So how do you protect your island from the extreme forces of the waves? I think we'll take our inspiration, Richard, from this little group of jacks. So these are jacks. Now, um, forgive me, but it seems like quite a leap, because how do they take the energy out of the wave? Well, this is more a modern version of the jack. These things interlock together. So the principle here is these shapes interlock. Lock. And the space between them, the water swirls within them and loses its energy. So it's these holes it's the that holes are doing the, the work. Yeah, the holes. It's nothing, create something. Holes are the answer. Well, sort of. Holes were first used in revolutionary jack-shaped sea defences created by South African harbour engineers. They saw a local version of jacks being played and fascinated by how the jacks interlocked, successfully redesigned the harbour defences for East London. Almost all coastal defences still rely on this idea of holes, including the Burj Al Arab. I'm creating a furniture protection system inspired by the sea defences used to protect a hotel, in which spaces are the secret ingredient. Instead of trying to stop waves dead with a wall, the idea was to create a series of spaces, holes, that absorb the energy of the sea. And we're going to see if the same principle will protect my spare dining table. It will be the holes doing the work, I hope. We need to clear off out of the way, and let's do it again. Only this time, my table will survive. Probably. It's your theory. Uh, I know. <laughs> Homemade defences will use the holes in the tyres to redirect the water. It will swish around and should fall harmlessly at the bottom. All right, I have every faith. Let's give it a go. If we've done our homework right, this will save the glass, just as it saves the Burj Al Arab's man made island. If we're ready, in five, four, three, two, one. This is one of those occasions when just from seeing something you suddenly really understand it because you can see the breakwater break that big lump of water up into just eddies and swirls and bits. And it really was the holes doing the work. The holes did all the work. Net effect, a protected table, a protected island, a protected hotel. Not that my table isn't important. In Dubai, the Burj Al Arab engineers used exactly the same principle for breaking up waves, except they used concrete, not old tyres. Their defences create a smooth, elegant and uniform shape, suitable for keeping a world-class hotel's head above water. The holes are so good at taking the energy out of waves, that the island could be built at just seven and a half meters above sea level. Keeping the island relatively low allows the architects to continue the illusion of a boat on the water. But what I think is fascinating is how the architects completed the boat itself inside the sea defenses.